All right, thanks for tuning in to this episode. Today we're going to be doing another uh, review of uh, a art edition book. But before we do that, I'm going to do some shameless self-promotion because that's what the, that's the cool thing to do. Um, if you watched this TV show or read the book, uh, there's a book called Jupiter's Legacy, which I did some work in. Uh, I was thinking over Chris Sprouse, uh, right over here. Chris Sprouse was a penciler, and I did finishes on Jupiter's Legacy, so check that out. Uh, barcode is over here if you need this. You can get this on Amazon. Uh, look on the bottom of the video description, and then you can also... Uh, order from my Amazon links. Anything you order from my Amazon links, I get a little bit of a commission. So this is the size of the trade paperback that I worked on, but we're not talking about this. We're actually going to be talking about P. Craig Russell's Murder Mysteries and Other Stories, a gallery edition. Okay, so here's the whole book. This is the size of the actual book. Look how big it is compared to a regular comic book. Okay, look at that. Look how look how large is this. Okay, I'm gonna show you the spine. If you need to take a look at the spine, it is printed by uh, Dark Horse, Murder Mysteries, and other stories, gallery edition, Dark Horse. And then here's the back. We see a nice artwork on the back, right over here. And here's the UPC code. Um, this isn't new, so you may have to look for it in the secondary market. And without further ado, let's take a look at um, the Murder Mystery uh, Gallery Edition. So P. Greg Russell is one of my favorite artists. And when he does inking and drawing, it, it looks like the way he draws is really neat. So we're gonna look at the first page. It just looks like spirit. I'm not sure if that's the spirit. Uh, well, I just know spirit. This is the first uh, um, inside front cover. And this book is, let's see how many pages this book is. Um, this is a pretty thick book. This is about 222 pages of artwork. So what artist editions are, um, there are scans from the original artwork in 11 by 17 full size. And we take a look at the artwork where it's the raw material. Instead of doing image adjustments or uh, coloring, you get that in black and white. Okay, here's all the information here. Okay, I'm gonna take a look on this side. Stories and notes that's written by uh, P. Craig Russell himself. Special thanks to Mike Mignola, Neil Gaiman, Clive Barker, and the Will Eisner estate. So I guess there is some Will Eisner going on over here. Uh, um, spirit. The, the Billy Ireland Museum, MB, um, NBM, and Wayne Allen Herald. So I'm not gonna read all of this. If you want to read it, you can pause the video. And then if I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video. Of the spirit art walk s p i r i t the p i guess p is the the spirit over here okay yeah so the, it looks like there is a spirit this is done on dc paper and this is I, when i look at p craig's russell work i can tell that it's p craig's what's russell work because it's really the way he draws is really graphic it kind of reminds me of um um norman rockwell then we're going to go through the next page. So it looks like just some gray washes that P. Craig Russell did. So I'm going to flip through this uh, really quickly. Otherwise, this is going to be like uh, a commentary on each page. And this could be like a 12-hour video. So we don't, we don't really want that. Okay, look at all the details in here. And I'm planning on doing more of these uh, artist edition reviews or gallery editions. Uh, there's there's so many types of artist editions out there. There's artist editions, artisan editions, uh, artifact edition, gallery editions. What's this one called? This one's called the gallery edition. Dark Horse makes them. Uh, IDW Publishing makes them. Um, graffiti Designs also makes them. So there's a lot of publishers that mix all these different ones. And I, I kind of collect them because I like uh, looking at the original artwork because um, being an artist myself, I often also work from Marvel and DC Comics, as well as uh, Image Comics, just like uh, this Jupiter Legacy right over here. Um, I work and I would see images in this large size. Comics that's done in the smaller size like this, some of the details gets lost, especially when it's uh, colored. And this is also one of the books that I worked on. When it's colored, you can't see all the details. Okay, here's the paste up over here. New Guy Means Murder Mysteries. Here's the handprint. I wonder if this is P. Craig Russell real handprint. Uh, so he just put his hand in ink and then paste it, reduce it, and then uh, adjust it a little bit. And some uh, some of the stats here. Okay, 
Now look at each image that's drawn. It's really stylized, really good. Like the design aspect of a P. Craig Russell, he's a really good designer. And even those leaves here, look how nice and intricate. And the line weights on these are like so nice. Now, I didn't know this. Um, this is actually my first time seeing uh, P. Craig Russell's work as I'm uh, doing this video uh, with you together. Um, I've seen some of his work in color, some of his graphic novel work, but I didn't know that a lot of them were paste ups. So I'm looking at the original art, I can see paste ups over here, like pieces of paste. You know, it's just the color on these graphic albums, these gallery editions, looks so real that I, it feels like a real, real. Um, like original art page, like I see the, the thickness of it, I feel like I can peel it off. Okay, some notes over here. Okay, we're also gonna talk about P. Craig Russell's storytelling. Okay, we have all this going on, and it, it, vanishing points going towards the right direction, uh, the details of the back, some of the speed lines to mimic shadows over here, the cars, the grass, I mean, not the grass, the leaves over here, the faces are smaller heads, uh, Pico Regasso likes to draw little dots on the eyes. Yeah, I believe he inks his own work. He draws and inks his own work. Okay, I don't know about this binding here. It looks like the pages might be, yeah, so the pages on these gallery editions, uh, for those of you who are interested in buying it, buying it, uh, looks like it's, it flips and opens, like it's just like smaller sections of the book. If you guys can see that, like that, okay. Yeah, so as I'm turning pages, I hear a, like a little flick sound on the page. Okay, so we have this one, but the art is pretty good. And some of you might say buying an artist's edition is pretty expensive. They run usually around $100, $150. Um, sometimes you can get them for a little bit less depending on what book it is and what title and if it's popular or not popular. Um, the, the way I see it is um, sometimes you go to comic book conventions and you're buying uh, art prints from artists. They're like $10 a print or $20 a print and you get to sign art print. Um, I, the way I think about it is if I buy 10 prints, it's equivalent to one artist edition except, I, except that I get more than 10 pages, more than um, 20 pages. I get like 200 some pages and I can study the artwork. Yeah, so all these are, yeah, I see the pencil lines on the, the word balloons. So that tells me that when the artwork was done, um, it was actually hand lettered before it was inked. That, that's what it tells me. Okay, look at the space, spacing here. We have an establishing shot, then it goes further away. And then here it goes back in and you see the character that's on, uh, on the page. Uh, the thing I like about P. P. Craig, uh, we'll just call him Russell's work, okay? So I don't have to say his no na whole name. When he does his inking, all the spacing of his line work is really p precise. Like, he, he looks like he's an artist that spends a lot of time uh, working on each line. Like the spacing of the line is done perfectly. Oh, I, I can see some of the pencil lines over here. That looks very good. Some of the hatch lines, detail here, uh, some of the negative space that he used to be able to create a C, but without having to draw all that in detail. And this here, if you can look at it, if you can see this, um, we, he, he draws this with image, he'll take a photocopy of this image, reduce it, paste it here. I see a paste up and I see another paste up here. Sometimes when I do artwork, um, I would do that in Photoshop. Uh, back in the day, artists that didn't use Photoshop or doesn't know how to use Photoshop, they'll just take it uh, in a photocopy machine, make a copy and then just paste it here and then reduce the paste it there. Uh, with Photoshop, it's just so much easier. You can just scan the image and then cut this image and just crop it there and just paste it over there. These pages are pretty thick. Well, look at this. Each page I see that looks really nice. Yeah, the spacing, each image looks, kind of reminds me of how Mike Mignola uh, does artwork too. Like some of the artists out there, you can see that um, when they're drawing, they're just drawing panel per panel. But here, when you're looking at each panel, it looks like a cover image. Like like this alone, like right here, just kind of look like a, a cover, just kind of look like a cover. Okay, I see some of the gray gray tones on the black over here. Okay, lot, lots, of, lots of designs and precise uh, template work over here. Okay, we we'll take a look at this, and then the paste up. This was drawn. Actually, that's interesting. 
No, no, no. Okay. So these were drawn separately. This was the pace up of this because I see the different tones over here. Okay. Interesting how they did that. Um, some artists, I've worked with uh, Marvel DC. I've seen some artists where they would do pace up of the head and then redraw the hands and then they can uh, not have to draw all of that at the same time. Because this is the chest part and the head is pretty similar. You can do a pace up and then just change the face here. Uh, you can also do a pace up of uh, the wings over here. Lots of designs, lots of really intricate uh, mazes patterns. Okay, we have four here, some little notes over here. Did he know cover? I doubt it. As advice, oh, I think this is just a uh, uh, Russell writing down what's happening. Yeah, that these, this is just a text. So he's just writing it down, and then coming back to it later. I doubt it. These are the same words. I have, I have seen. Yep, same words. I don't know why he would write that on the side. It makes sense. Some artists they would just write down names of the characters. We have some notes on the bottom that he's writing for himself. That's all I want to know for now. Yeah, he's just, Russell is just making notes for himself. And it looks like he's using his own Bristol board. If you're working for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Image Comics, uh, they provide you with the Bristol boards. Um, I see here, aside from, you see, like these are like DC boards. Maybe he just ran out of uh, boards and then Oh no, 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 it doesn't seem like it when he's working for DC. Uh, Spirit was published by DC, but with this one, he's buying his own boards and drawing his own crop lines over here. Okay, we have this. Yeah, very, very clean artist. Um, the ink he's using is really nice and dark. It looks like he's going back in there and drawing the outlines first and then filling it in later because I see the different shades of black uh, in, in the ink. Okay, again, feel free to pause the video if I'm going too fast. Um, there's more. Yeah, I don't really like how these small bindings, the pages just kind of flips right out. It's kind of weird. Like if I turn this page, you hear a crack. You guys hear that? Yeah, so the binding on this isn't really as nice as some of the, uh, like for example, some of the binding on here, there, there's no cracking sound when you're opening page to page. This is the first time I heard some cracks on here, so I'm gonna be very quiet. When I turn the page, you'll hear it. Okay, so I get to just, there's no crack over here. So here's some of the work. Interesting. Um, yeah, Russell would just actually draw the lines and then he'll draw around the lines and then he doesn't use white out to draw that. So he actually did each of these uh, independently. Okay, very precise line work. You know, and, uh, additionally, I don't see a lot of whiteout in his work. That tells me how professional he is uh, in drawing and inking. Um, the only areas I see that has some kind of adjustments are uh, stats, where he's um, using the image uh, over and over again. I see that he will draw some of the pencil lines over here, but doesn't actually um, go back in there and ink it. Yeah, very, very precise uh, drawing lines he's even drawing line weights on some of these uh, areas the wings are done, done nicely i like how he has the outside wings a little bit thicker and then these wings on the back a little bit further back uh, that that gives depth to the artwork okay yeah I, the way russell draws faces is really like intense like it's it's almost like looking at a, a statue like a statue figure yeah, very, very, very cool. Very cool line work quality over here. Now, I noticed that he, he does use this a lot of, uh, see, there goes those stats again. He's just cropping stats on top. Interesting. So I can see Good Scanner, the company that, uh, Dark Horse Comics that took uh, this and scanned this, they did a good job as I can see this. So they, Russell drew this, made a scan, and then the letter added this on top because I can see through the letters uh, some of the, uh, the artwork that's underneath there. So there's a stat and then another letter stat on top of that stat. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, the anatomy, the way he draws the anatomy is so, so perfect. You hear that cracking sound? Let's go, let's do that again. See, you hear that? Bad binding job. 
Dark Horse, um, you gotta get a better printer. Uh, like find a better printer that doesn't have that cracking sound. It's not so much that it's breaking, it's the, the sewn in pages sections and probably because the pages, they, they should actually have the stitching more further out. Listen, see, same thing. So just the pages kind of flipping next to each other. Okay, well, never mind that. It's probably gonna happen throughout the whole book. Hopefully it just doesn't fall apart on me because this is the, my first time uh, reading this. Okay, so here's our, I wonder if um, Russell actually drew this himself or he had like maybe uh, like a little kid draw that and he pastes this on top. Okay, some newspaper articles and this is, looks like a real newspaper. Sometimes I like to go in there and read like what's happening there. See if you can just go in there. As long as six months and we'll focus on trading activities. So interesting how Russell, he had this, these letters kind of far. He just put a little white paste up and he just covers it up. It's okay. I guess uh, the words aren't that important. Sometimes artists, when they do letters there, um, they'll hide little Easter eggs. Okay, that's a stat. But what is that a stat of? When did he draw that earlier? These legs here, or maybe he drew it on a separate page. He placed the stat here and then just some white out around there because there's something going on. I don't know why why he, he did that and that and not draw it. Maybe he made a mistake, and there's so much mistakes that he decided to draw it on a separate piece of paper and just uh, attach that there. I like the way Craig Russell uh, draw these lines over here. I just beat lines and then how some is darker how some is thicker some is thinner okay the end even that looks good these chime isolation and illusion this one looks like a pencil rendering we're gonna look at some of these this is a page that's all in pencil it needs to scan higher that's why you see some of the tones if this was kind of reduced to gray tones on Photoshop um, then you would get line work like this well, these are all in pencil. If it was uh, just to gray tones, it will be black and white, okay? It'll be a little bit gray. But because these are pencils, um, the artist or the uh, production, they would have to scan it in full color and adjust the contrast in order to be able to see all the pencils here. So this, is, this looks like uh, pencil work and stuff that isn't inked. So let's take a look at some of his pencils. Wow, look at this, the shading on this. So when Russell does his pencil work, there's a big difference in comparing in comparing to his inking work. With his pencil work, there's more tones to his artwork. It's more refined, more depth. When he's inking, he's not as patient as he is when he's uh, drawing everything in pencil. With the pencil line, I can see all each of the strokes. It's not he's not scribbling them in. He's drawing them in. Everything is nice and neat. Um, and lines are starting and stopping in the right place. He does draw in a blue pencil first, and he goes back and then he draws stuff in a regular pencil. Um, does he draw through, he, all of these he does draw through the artwork in blue, but when he draws it in pencil, he'll skip over it. So he doesn't draw over it and erase. He also uses a thin pen, uh, eraser pencil to erase lines on those areas. So that's interesting uh, to see. I'm gonna move this light. Let's see if we need this light. Okay, let's just put this light right over here. And move this light a little bit higher. Okay, we're gonna take a look at some of these other areas. Let's see. Okay, here's another page. I wonder why this page is so yellow. I, th I guess it's different people scanning the artwork. Yeah, it looks like different people scanning the artwork over here. We're gonna take, continue looking at some of the gray work. It's almost like a pencil shading. Really, really nice and clean. Or maybe this book was just drawn this way on purpose and then it was colored uh, over the pencils. Okay, here's more. Uh, some of the face there, I would have more hair over here. Uh, the hair is kind of too little. Or maybe this character's hair is it's not even hair. It's more like, I don't know, it's, the hair over here is kind of big. Over here, all of a sudden, it gets kind of little. 
Um, I guess we don't really pay attention to the hair over here. Look at this eye. The detail of the eye is amazing over here. Okay. And then we have the end of this. Beauty without the beloved is like a sword through the heart. Rosetti. Okay. Human remains. Okay. It's interesting. It looks like a different style. Okay. And then we have all these texts over here. Adapted by P. Grit Russell. Feel free to pause the video if you want to read all of that. I'm going to look on this side. Let me move this light on this direction, see if that makes it better. Okay, move that light back over here. Okay, that makes it a little bit better. Okay, okay now, co coming towards this direction, we have Russell using gray tones over here. He's not doing this on a computer. In fact, he's buying um, zipper tones where you can go to an art store and buy these plastic sheets and then tape it on. Once you tape it on, you would use an exacto knife and cut around it. On this area, what he's done was he would draw this image and then he would draw the background image. After drawing this image, he would use this uh, clear acetate that has these light gray patterns, dot patterns, and he would paste them on top. That's how he got that effect here. Same with these, you see right here, if you look at it, there's some areas that are kind of white that's missing. Like for example here, it's because when he was cutting this out, he kind of overcut. That's why there's some lines that uh, came out a little bit. Uh, that can be easily fixed uh, on Photoshop during production, but maybe this was the time when they didn't use Photoshop to do the work. Same with hair, uh, some of that white line just uh, wasn't enough. What I would have done is I would just make that line work a little bit thicker. Uh, make that thicker or make the top thicker and then scoot that down a little bit. Okay, nice job on putting it forward again. So that's one of the things I, uh, over right here, look at this, that, that little tone on top of the artwork. It just makes it look like it's a little bit further back. When you're doing artwork, it's always good. I like how he went from thin to medium to dark. It's always good to have the foreground a little bit darker, middle ground a little bit lighter, and background white, or vice versa, the opposite direction. That is the best way to uh, show your artwork in depth, like foreground, middle ground, background, okay? We have this going on here, the tones, a lot of text. I don't know who the writer is. There's a line here. I'm not sure why there's a line there. These are stat pages. Okay, these are stat pages. That's why they're turning yellow over here. They're stat pages of what? They're stat pages of this image right here. So, in sequential order, the artwork was done here. Russell is planning what's happening on each page, and he's deciding which of these stats to draw originally first. So he drew this first, and then made a photocopy, and then taped that image here, here, and then here, okay? I understand why, because of these two, he could have drawn this one or this one, so he just went with this one, and then he would make a stat and place that there. And then he would make another stat, and place it here and cropped off these wine bottles. That is why this was a good choice to draw this first. If he drew these two first or one of these first, he would have to make a stat and redraw that. Why not just make the whole largest area and then go backward and paste those on. The whiteout over here is because when he pasted it on, he probably had some dirt on, underneath the glue stick and then his finger kind of like uh, rubbed off on it and then he just used white out to kind of clean it out so during the production it doesn't see that line but over time the paper the, the regular paper that I used just kind of faded and then you can see it now but during production you don't really see it like when it's scanned right away okay oh that cracking sound just kills me like that okay some tones nice job I wonder why he didn't just leave that to the letterer I mean, I mean to the colorist. Could be most of his work is done in color, so that could that could be just colored in instead of doing the tone. That's uh, extra work. I mean, it looks nice on the original artwork, right here. That looks okay. This cross hatch line thing over here kind of looks yucky to me. It's, it's, he, Russell draws and inks uh, better than that. I don't know what's going on over here. I don't know if he actually uh, did this or yeah, someone else do that. That that doesn't seem like uh, Russell's work. Uh, when I see Russell's uh, hatch lines and cross hatch, I, I, I'll see lines like this, which is very precise, very uh, meticulous, drawn one at a time. This is kind of messy. I don't know if he did that or he had someone else do that. Okay, we'll take a look at this. Very nice. Very, very cool work. 
um, w when he first pasted these um, acrylic sheets up here, it wasn't yellowish. It's over time. It's kind of like getting a piece of scotch tape and you're taping it uh, like something like against the wall and over time that scotch tape just starts to turn yellow that's why these are kind of yellowish but when he first started using them it wasn't yellow it was clear okay the whiteouts yeah he doesn't use much whiteouts to to make he doesn't have, doesn't really make that much actually i don't see any mistakes at all it's very very accurate and very precise uh, <laughs> right here you see the extra sheet there's not enough it's probably because when they made the stats it was only that big and then he couldn't get a, a bigger stat to uh, extend all the way you know what you could have done uh, Mr. Russell you can have just draw this page a little bit smaller and then when they scan it scan it a little bit larger so you don't have to worry about that if if the zip tone was uh, that important okay you will take a look at this okay stat page stat page Okay, nice use of that page. Uh, so this is more story driven, like the text. Um, that's why some of the stat, oh, look, there's some words looking behind him, but yeah, some of the words that was covered up. So that's a letter issue. That's a letters thing. Okay, here's some more. Very, very nice work. Storytelling and pacing is very good. When he uses stat images, this shows the progression of time. And then someone looks out. Same with here. Is the statue in the bath? It makes him think. They're thinking about it. I don't know what that white box is. Ran out of the stat again. And he goes, it imitates. That just shows the pulse. Like when a question is asked, and then there's another panel that shows the same image. <coughs> And then the answer is, is to sh tell the reader that there's a pulse uh, in answering that question over here. Okay, I'm going to take a look at nice some of the detail, different textures and different details over here. Again, story pacing right over here. Uh, character comes out, walks further. You see him walk past and then all of a sudden you're focusing the window and this is what's happening on the inside. Okay, we have these characters. Um, stat white with liquid papers liquid paper white out white out this is the only one that didn't have it so very detailed intricate work and then these are placed in here after it was placed shadows was drawn on the photocopy paper over here each of these shadows are drawn in a different direction we have this one okay yeah i'm not um i have never actually used uh stats Actually, I, I've used stats before, but not for Marvel DC. I did some stat work when I was uh, doing work for Viz Media, uh, publishers of uh, Naruto and One Piece, um, back in the day when I was doing freelance work. Um, but on with Marvel or DC, uh, once in a while, I would go in there and add some kind of tones, but I would add it on Photoshop. I would actually create my own tones. Um, uh, just go in there and uh, scan, like, create a shade of tone and then just create my own uh, tones. You don't really need to buy it or go online and copy it. It's very easy to make your own tones kind of like this. You can adjust the uh, the frequency of how many dots you want on Photoshop and then create uh, dark to light uh, and then uh, turn it into a bitmap and it'll become uh, all these tones. Originally you work on grayscale and you turn it into bitmap. Okay, are these stats or are these all newly? I think these are, they look like it's all newly drawn. Let me take a look. Let me see if I can, my eye can spot it. Um, the work balloons are all different. The, the background art, they look the same. Yeah, they're stats, they're stats, I, I can tell. Um, I'll look for patterns to see if I can find the same pattern. If I find Im any images that looks different, then I know that they're all once drawn. Like this dot over here, that dot repeats itself over and over again. So these are stats, it was drawn once, and then it was uh, repeated uh, a few times. This one's a stat, this one's a stat, that one's a stat, I can tell. This one's a stat, this is the original drawing, right here. I can see the white lines that was pasted on top. So he drew this one, made the tone, made a photocopy, placed it here, 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 and here. Okay, so that's kind of fun. Uh, as a comic book artist who's been doing comic book art myself for over 20 something years, I, I do like looking at people's artwork and I try to see the process in doing the work like the steps they did and which one uh, they did first and what they did do next and then also try to figure out their uh, thinking process in creating the artwork 
This is pure brush, pure brush. I wonder if he just, uh, if he's right hand artist drawing all this, if he uses left hand to do all this. Sometimes if you're an artist, you're drawing so much that when you only draw kind of like sloppy like this, your hand just doesn't do it. So you try to use your left hand, you try to draw, uh, make the artwork kind of look sloppy a little bit. Okay, some gray tones. This kind of looks like a newspaper print here. Okay, lots of, lots of words. I wonder if Russell did all the lettering himself or if he... Uh, um, had a different letter do the work. Let me go to the front to see, to look at the credits. Let me see. I don't think I remember seeing credits of um, a letter. In, yeah, I don't think I saw credits of a letter. Okay. Anyway, we're going to continue moving forward. Progression of time. Uh, when he drew all this, there's time, but he purposely placed clock in here to show the reader the progression of time. So it gives it more of an impact. He's tossing and turning, and then he's starting to dream, and then it comes to this image, and then there's all of this going on. Okay, great, great storyteller. Time, like you'll notice time, and then he starts to fade out, and then he starts to fall asleep, and then he starts dreaming right over here. I didn't read the text, but based on the images, that's. I can see that's what um, Russell is trying to convey in the artwork. And then nicely fall asleep and then light turns on, on the light bulb. That light bulb becomes the sun and then the cat goes there and wakes him from beyond. Okay, HP Lovecraft's From the Beyond, adapted for comics by P. Greg Russell. That looks like his own writing, so maybe he lettered this himself as well. Uh, I know that he can also letter, hand letter. So let's take a look at some of the work here. So we have some, oh, look, white out. No, okay, I can tell. This white out here was because originally it was lettered and he didn't really like the way it was lettered and he removed it. And then probably he didn't want the character to stand too close over there. And that's why he moved it back here. And then what's up with these messy hatch lines? That's that's not that's not Russell's work. This is more Russell's work. This is more Russell's work. Okay, I can I can tell by the style, but when it comes to here, I don't know what's going on. Maybe the ink is not drying fast enough and it's digging into the paper and it's creating that effect. Lines are kind of like crossing. If you see some of these lines, Russell doesn't overlap lines. Like the lines doesn't overlap to where where it's supposed to. Uh, it stays inside the line, but all this is going outside the lines. That's I don't know. Maybe he's using his other hand to draw. Okay, right over here, some of this. Some blank panel showing nothing happening. There's a white line here. Okay, good. Very nice work. Uh, look at the motion of how directions are flowing from here to here to here. And it comes right here. And this one goes here and this eyeball focus you to look because you look this way. Same with this. This one goes here. After, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining how movement works with uh, comic book art. This image, you see this image, this flow of mixed eye go here. You see this dragon and this tail brings you back to these two readers. After it brings you to the readers, you have this eye that comes over here. After it comes here, you see the text, you, you read this here, and this one comes back up here. You're reading the text, you're going back up here, and you're reading all this. Even though this is all one image, this, the mass, the mastery of Russell, it just brings your eye movement to the right place. So it looks up, it looks, goes, looks here, comes here, just looks back here, and it's facing that direction to point here. This is how all of this works. Uh, a great comic book artist, uh, storyteller, um, can can make the viewer's eyes flow in the, in the correct direction. Okay, so we got to go here. This one points here. I want to come back here and start here. Okay. Good, good. These white tones kind of hide some of the line work. Uh, in Photoshop, you can just always select that area and just do a, a little bit of a blur. Uh, even here, there's this foreground, middle ground, and background. Just tones, darker tones in the front. It gets kind of medium value and then lighter. And then we have this one even, even almost like a medium value here. Okay, we're gonna flip through some of the other pages. Nice pose, kind of messy on the zip tone. But color can't cover up that. 
you don't really see that. Comic books, these are original size. After a comic book is printed, they're print into the smaller size comic book like this. And then uh, after that, you probably won't even see that. Okay, command performance. And now we have, oh, look at this. Dark Horse paper, look who showed up. This is Hellboy by Mike Mignola. I did not know Hellboy was gonna show up in this book. This is a nice treat. Command performance, Will Pfeiffer, artist P. Craig Russell. P. Craig Russell, OP07, I don't know what all these dates are, okay? This is a treat for me. Like I'm, I'm such a huge Hellboy fan. And this is a Hellboy story. Okay, this is Dark Horse art boards. I remember these boards. Uh, when I was working for Dark Horse, they sent me some of these bristle boards, and those bristle boards had these black markings there. I, it annoyed me so much. I did not like those black marks there. Uh, it looks like it's ink, because sometimes if we're doing artwork, we just have to go out there. If the panel needs to be white, I had to use white out and kind of wipe that out. But that was printed that way. Dark Horse Comics uh, art board was exactly like this. Uh, when I was doing stuff for uh, Predator, when I was doing stuff with Xenia Warrior Princess, um, some of the other uh, properties that they worked on, they sent me these boards and it was, they always had those lines. So Russell wasn't drawing those in, it was already in there, see? So it's like that, you see that? You see how those black lines are going into the artwork right over here? Okay. There's some of the monsters, larger heads in the foreground, middle ground, and then you see Hellboy back there. See the eyes pooping out. Some Kirby Crackle. Uh, some of you who don't know what Kirby Crackle, Jack Kirby is one of the artists who made these famous, these little dots there. It, sh it almost shows like an energy effect, the Kirby Crackle. Oh man, I wanna see more Hellboy. Is there more Hellboy showing up? Okay, wham, blam, yep, yep. Russell is uh, lettering his own book over here. Okay, this is his own letters. Look at the design of it. It's just very nice. B-L-A-M. Okay. Uh, I used to be a letterer myself. Uh, I did some lettering for Viz Media as well as some of the independent uh, comic books out there where I was inking and lettering and also drawing at the same time. So I do know how to um, pencil, how to ink, how to letter, and how to color, um, but I'm known more as an inker because I, I've done more inking work uh, for my career in comics. Ape Sabian. The birthday of the Infanta. Okay, let's see what this is. Oscar Wilde's The Birthday of the Infanta. Opus 44, adapted for comics by P. Craig Russell, 1977. So this was done in 1977? Well, maybe the story is done in 1977. What's going on over here with this dark, or with this Hellboy? Let me see if there was a date here. No, Paris 1994 was their story, but 2003 was when Russell worked on this. Okay, so it looks like 1997 was when he worked on this. Look at those eyes on the flowers. Okay. He draws a little fan over here just to see how it looks. And then he would draw it uh, after he finalized the look. Okay. Uh, this is a more, more simplistic uh, artwork compared to what I'm used to seeing. Like compared to some of the stuff that we see up in the front, like really highly detailed and rendered. These are kind of a little bit more, more of a children's book right over here. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other pages and look at his storytelling. We go here, looks this way. This character faces that direction. It has to face that direction to draw the reader's eye to go here, okay? We go here and all of a sudden we have, this one goes off the page and we have all these people. Okay, we have this. He's looking off the page, okay? And then looking off to the distance. Then we have all of this detail. Again, there goes Peter Russell's eye when he's just drawing a little circle. It's kind of cute. I gotta do that the next time I draw comics uh, on, on figures. Okay. Look at those uh, lips. Look at those eyes. Uh, line weights. I would, I would have made this line much thicker here myself being an inker. Uh, look how thick that line is. Look how thin that line is. I would have made this much thicker to give it more of a, a pop. Okay, we're gonna look over here. Hmm, the artwork back in the back over here is much more um, simple compared to the ones in the front. Okay, with well, these stats, oh, look at this. He drew each of these independently. Yeah, I'm looking at the details. 
like just three pieces of fur. He drew each of these three times, four times. He didn't stack them. Which is understandable if you make a stat and you have uh, this leg coming in front and then this arm going in back, it's a little bit more tricky to do. You might as well just draw it instead of making stats and cutting around and trying to figure out which one's in front and which one's in the back. Okay, we have a silhouette of that character. I don't know any of these characters. I just like looking at his artwork. Am I going to read the story? Maybe. Am I going to find out what the name of the characters are? Maybe. But the artwork, I'm just going to look over and over again. Yeah, nice, nice thick artwork. Nice thick uh, bo uh, bold lines on the outside. Again, feel free to pause the video. Um, if you enjoy these videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, please like and share my video. If you hit the like button, it helps the algorithm of my channel and um, it will push more readers to see my work. I've been doing YouTube for maybe five years, but you know, I, I do hope that people learn stuff from my YouTube videos. I started making them as a tool for teaching because I was a teacher at the Academy of Art University. But after doing videos for a while, they start to become fun. And then sometimes people comment and then they tell me, I went to see, uh, what is this stain over here? What is this? Yeah, this is stain in the back. I don't know what that is. It's not even the original art. Maybe something was oily or something that got there. Yeah, I've been doing YouTube videos, and then um, if you enjoy them, uh, please check out my Patreon page. I have a Patreon where you can um, support me on making some of these videos. My Patreon is patreon.com slash art. I also add links below the video description if you want to uh, click that and check it out. I also have a website, it's wallthewallart.com, and on my website you can see uh, everything I worked on in my career as a comic book artist for Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, Viz Media. Uh, you also find a gallery of some of the stuff uh, that I've drawn. There's also a shop of prints that you can order from, so check that out. And we, we're almost towards the end. There's only a few more pages, so I'm gonna go a little bit quicker. And again, if you want to read up on this, feel free to pause the video. Okay. This book's a little bit harder to find. You can find it in a good price out there. I just came out a little while before. Oh, there's a page that stuck together. Right over here, the gift of Maggi. Maggi. Look at the flow of that. Okay. And let me know what you think of this video here if you want to see more uh, art edition videos. Because I do have a lot of art edition videos. I, I, I mean, I don't, I mean, not art edition videos. I have a lot of artist edition books, like artisan editions, artifact editions, gallery editions. I've been co uh, collecting these uh, artist editions, and then I figured I might as well just bring them and record them and fill them and film them and then when I want to read them again I can just like watch the YouTube video and then have it uh, online or I can just carry this like 30 pound book or however the weight 20 pound book is these book arts is kind of heavy uh, moving them around does take a little bit of a uh, effort and and they're large too so this is P. Greg Russell's uh, mystery book we're coming to the end, and then here's a little bit of a detail. I'm going to read what it says here. A graduate of the University of Cincinnati with a degree in painting, P. Craig Russell has run the gamut in comics. After establishing a name for himself at Marvel and at, on Kill Raven and Doctor Strange, he went on to become one of the pioneers who opened new vistas for the underestimated field of under, is underestimated field with, among other works, adaptions of operas by Mozart, The Magic Flutes, Strauss, Salome, and Wagner, The Ring of Nubla. Russell is also well known for his fairy tales of Oscar Wilde series, which was what we just saw a little bit earlier, as well as his graphic novel adaptions of Neil Gaiman's The Sandman, The Dream Hunter, Caroline, and The Graveyard Book. And that's him right over there. Okay, and then we'll look at the last page, which is nothing. I guess if you want, if you saw Russell and you wanted him to draw something, you can have him autograph on the back. And then we have the last page, which is the same as the very first inside front cover. Okay, right over here. And there you have it. That is Murder Mysteries Gallery Edition. Right over here. That 20 pound book. Actually, maybe more like 10 pounds or something. More than a second workout. And then here's some of the covers. We ate this with different um, markers, different color markers, and then maybe some color pencils, looks like. 
And then on the bottom, it says, Featuring stories by New Gemi, Mike Mignola, Ray Fabry, Clyde Parker, and more. So there you have it. Please like, share, subscribe to my channel. Until next time, keep on drawing, wait for my other videos, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.